Welcome to the Wager Talk podcast for the week ending October 1st. We've got a big show tonight as William Bernicke will be joining us from CG Analytics. He'll join us to talk about where the money's going on this weekend's college and pro football action. We're also going to have another segment of Handicappers Corner. This week's guest is Mark Lawrence from playbook.com he'll join us to go over a couple of the big college and pro games and i'm sure those will be games we'll be talking to will about as well ralph michaels and dave Koken in studio tonight we'll break down college and pro and have three best bets for you at the end of the show mark seidel behind the controls making sure we sound good i'm your host marco d'angelo so let's get this party started and let's welcome in tonight's first guest William Bernicke, he's the manager of CG Analytics. You can follow William on Twitter at the Money Line Guy all season long from time to time. We're going to bring Will in and talk to him, Just go behind the counter, take a peek at where the money's at. Sharp action, square action. You know, we've got uh, a lot to talk about. And I know, Ralph, you're chomping at the bit. To, we're taping on Thursday. Let's bring Will on. You got a question for him about Thursday night football. Go ahead. William, you know, we know Fox took over the Thursday night broadcast. They're paying $10 million a game, $550 million over five years to show 11 games. Obviously, they're starting with a beauty, the Rams and the Vikings, although people will hear this after the game has concluded. Has the handle had the uptick and the anticipation that people are excited for a Thursday night NFL game that has some meaning? Yeah, absolutely, Ralph. Uh, you know, I'm, it's hard to say uh, whether what channel the game is on is affecting the handle here, but certainly with these two, uh, you know, contenders playing each other this uh, early in the year and the way the Rams have looked, uh, the, the handle here is uh, certainly approaching. Uh, not quite the Detroit-New England Sunday night game, but uh, somewhere in that ballpark. William, uh, moving over to Friday night action. we got college football uh, going on Friday. Is there any um, sharp action uh, that you're getting? You got any liability on one of the games uh, for Friday night? Well, the Memphis-Tulane game, it opened up 14, still there. Uh, not much uh, to speak of there. It's, it's pretty even on both sides there. And uh, the other game, you know, I'm not surprised that there's uh, been some activity there with uh, two higher-profile uh, schools there, UCLA, Colorado. Colorado opened at minus 10 and a half, down to minus 10. We we, t- we took a respected bet on UCLA at 10 and a half, uh, but 70% of all dollars are also coming in on UCLA, so they're uh, they're taking the double digits there. You know, moving to the Big Ten on Sun on Saturday, excuse me. The biggest game this year, I think year-to-date, probably going to be the most-watched game year-to-date, the whiteout at Penn State with Ohio State-Penn State. You know, I know the line climbed to four, came back down. Is the volume at this game so far leading the college ranks? Yeah, you know, it was interesting, uh, Mark, about this game, Ohio State-Penn State. I had this, uh, you know, when I was looking to open it, like pick them. You know, pick them maybe one, and the fact that it's open to four – Ohio State, at least we opened it for. I, I knew we would get some Penn State money early on that game, so I was kind of surprised at that. Um, so it's been all really Penn State money so far. Uh, it's down to three and a half. I see some threes at some other books, and we've taken some respected money on Penn State at plus four. And I expect uh, some more money to come in at three and a half, and this line could kick, you know, the kickoff could be maybe minus three, even go down to two and a half. William, is there any other games on the Saturday card uh, that you're getting uh, one sided action or getting from the uh, respected players that uh, the Sharps that come in there to CG? Sure, yeah, Marco. Definitely, there's a, a couple games that have uh, seen some some movement and some, you know, money behind the movement. Uh, Clemson, of course, uh, up to I believe it's 25 and uh, 25 and a half now. Open at 21 and a half. Uh, Trevor Lawrence being named the starter uh, have obviously had something to do with that. And I also think betters, and I've heard betters talk this that the revenge from last year's loss at Syracuse on a nationally TV game. Uh, betters feel it, you know, Clemson will be motivated with that. Uh, but certainly, you know, Syracuse has played very well this year, so it's hard to 
to say that they uh, will, you know, just lay down here. I mean, they, they played real well in borderline top 25 team, but no, nothing, no respect to money has come in on Clemson yet. It's been all public money. Whenever the announcement was made on the switch of the quarterback, did you guys make a, an adjustment immediately, uh, or did you wait and see how the public came in with uh, actually betting the game? Uh, it was a wait and see because of uh, you certainly knew that this would, would happen because he played most of last game. And it was just a wait and see when we posted the number and, and just kind of you know, took some Clemson money and also followed the market as well. There are several other big games this weekend. Uh, the, you've got Stanford going to Notre Dame. And last week, anybody who watched college football and saw the end of the Stanford-Oregon okay. game, um, got to ask you, what was that swing for the house? Was that a, was that a good blunder by the coach or a bad blunder? <laughs> well, it certainly had a... Uh, uh, it wasn't as bad as, as people might have thought because we did get uh, some Oregon uh, money late on the game, so it wasn't too bad, especially Oregon money line. So that, that kind of wiped out those tickets there. So it wasn't too bad a decision in that regard. Um, but uh, as far as um, this game here, you know, coming up, uh, Oregon is playing Cal. When I, we'll just get into that. Might as well roll right into that game. As I, I'm still shaking my head at what I saw last week. Uh, after that, uh, one of the worst meltdowns. I, I'm sure you guys would agree that's one of the worst meltdowns you've seen because they could have taken a knee in that game, uh, you know, Oregon, and basically ran out the clock or at least maybe, you know, had five seconds left before they punted. But uh, Oregon opened up minus three. They're down to two and a half. Sixty-five percent of all dollars are on uh, the home dog Cal here, and, and I expect this to, to maybe creep down a little more. You know, William, I have two questions in the Big Ten. I never thought I would ha- see Purdue as an away favorite at Nebraska. That's number one. Mm-hmm. And number two, I know there's a ton of Wolverines fans. Shea Patterson, now the old Miss transfer, getting this offense going with an incredibly good defense. How are these two games playing out at the book? Well, Purdue, uh, they opened up at minus three, and they're currently sitting there at, at three. So it's been about 60% money on Purdue thus far, so nothing – you know nothing too uh, out of line there. Uh, Michigan is uh, they're at Northwestern. What's the start time in that game here? I'm just find it here. Uh, there it is. Okay, it's a one thirty start. I'd open up thirteen and a half, and it's up to fourteen and a half now. This has been one side of Michigan, and, and Michigan has looked good, and, and rightfully so. Betters are buying here, certainly with the way the way they've been moving the ball defensively. Now they haven't really played a, besides the Notre Dame game, they haven't played on the road, so another, this could be a, a test for them. Northwestern's been terrible this year, but they seem to play these type of games, Northwestern, pretty well. So uh, it's been 83% ball dollars on Michigan. We actually took a respected bet of minus 14 as well on Michigan. You know what? Uh, on, on the Dave Koch and Las Vegas Sports Line show, we talked to Jason Symbol, and last week we talked about how both the public and the pros we're on Georgia against Missouri, and I think you guys survived that game by a half and probably turned out pretty well. Are there any games this week where both the pros and Joes are on the same side? Yeah, that, that, so far that's been uh, on uh, Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame has been all one-way action, which is hard to believe. You, know, you would never guess that with, with the way you know, Stanford winning their game. I guess betters are feeling a letdown here, but open four and a half, up to five and a half. And we're looking at uh, 80, 85% of all dollars are coming in on Notre Dame. But that's one you could expect some buyback on Stanford once it hits six, maybe six and a half. The one game I want to ask you about, it's a Big 12 matchup. West Virginia's done everything asked of them so far this year, but they really haven't played anybody. We're going to find out, you know, this is their first real test going on the road, playing a Texas Tech team that just railroaded Oklahoma State last week, you know, is West Virginia for real? Where is the sharp money coming in this one? Well, interesting, Marco, in this game, uh, we saw it this morning, a big move on the total across the whole market, and it moved down 2.5 points now to 72.5. We've taken 90% of under money. And if we would have said that before the season, we'd all throw it nuts with these two teams going under with their offenses. But uh, that's a pretty big liability right now. As far as the side goes, it's uh, been um, – man, this is hard to believe. 91% of all dollars are on Texas Tech. So better certainly were impressed by that Oklahoma State. And to your point, Marco, they're not believing in West Virginia for their lack of competition thus far. Not that they have control of it, but it is what it is. Moving over to the NFL, uh, some key games this week. The uh, 
game I want to ask you, and then I'll let you say what uh, is happening with the the most popular, but there's a game. I'm just curious. I know you're going to be one-sided on teasers, um, but I'm curious if they're laying the seven as well, and that's the New England Patriots against Miami. Miami's 3-0, and and we might say after this week, if they go to New England and get blown out, that Miami was the most counterfeit 3-0 and team we've ever seen because they haven't played anybody yet. They've had the easiest schedule, but... I've got big concerns about this New England Patriot team. They've looked bad now two weeks in a row. Uh, the offense, which has always been the strong suit of this team, is not moving the football. And I know New England was, you know, helped you guys out last week because I know a lot of people were on the Patriots. Is it going to be a situation where they're on the Patriots again this week? It's hard to say, but my gut instinct says I, a better is a jump and ship here. And I think the main reason why – is better saw the way New England was not stopping the run against Detroit, who perennially does not run the ball well. And I think better see that, and they're seeing they're getting pushed around at the line of scrimmage. Now, whether that continues, it's hard to say the Belichick team is not going to stop the run at some point. But 68% of all dollars are on Miami. We took a respected bet on Miami plus seven. They're actually down to six and a half now. So uh, it's it's tough. You know, there's always those New England betters that are going to come in on Sunday. You know, you'd think there'd be some pushback up to seven. I, I, I'd say I would venture to, to lean towards, yes, there'll be some New England money, and we may need Miami day of game. I can just picture on Sunday morning the average Joe – walking up to the window, looking at that board, and have his teasers in hand and saying, Belichick, Brady, lose three in a row. That, that just, there's no way that can yeah. happen. And that, that's going to be you know, the, the, the key teaser for you on Sunday. I could see that. Absolutely. That'll be for four out of five people are mumbling that as they st- you know, stagger <laughs> to the window. And just for our listeners, New England in that situation is 8-0 and straight up, 7-1 and ATS. You know, William, I have a Joe Public question. Mm. Is the Sunday night or Monday night game – Always the most volume for you? Uh, I'd say nine out of ten times that scenario comes up. It is, uh, unless it's you know obviously you know Thanksgiving or, or holiday weekend. But yeah, nine out of ten times, especially uh, when you have a high-profile team on a Sunday night like New England and a Monday night like a Pittsburgh. I mean, for the primetime games this week, you could not have had three better NFL games uh, for viewing. In betting, I mean, you started off Thursday night with the Rams in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. You have the Sunday night game, Pittsburgh and Baltimore, which I'm definitely going to ask you about that. Me being a Pittsburgh guy, I want to see where the money's coming. And then Monday night, the world, anybody that hasn't got to see Pat Mahomes yet, which you had to be living under a rock for the first three weeks <laughs> of the NFL season, this guy has been unbelievable. 13 touchdown passes, no interceptions. How are you seeing the money on those two primetime games, Sunday night and Monday night? Oh, Ravens and Steelers, uh, so far it's been kind of like I thought, just totally balanced action. Betters are back on Pittsburgh after, you know, they're eking out that win against Tampa Bay. And certainly betters are, uh, you know, like Baltimore after the Denver game. So we're, we're seeing what we want here, somewhat even action. Uh, I, I can't even see this line coming off three. William, I have one more Joe Public question, and just a generic question that I as a fan want to know. You know, if you look at a game like a Sunday night or a Monday night game, and if you had to break down percentages, 60% on the sides, 30% on the totals, 10% live betting, where did those games fall into those percentages? The the primetime games? Yes. Uh, I would say uh, probably a little bit higher on the on the side like 65 percent that's including you know parlays teasers anything that's with a side on it and then uh you know it's anywhere from 20 to 25 percent on the totals and then you have your live betting which of course you know as everybody knows has has taken off you know it's just booming now whether it be a a pro uh you know jumping in live or someone who maybe missed the start time and bets the game live right right a kickoff or, or somewhere close to that William, what is for the NFL card on Sunday right now your biggest liability? Oh, uh, it's not even close right now. It's the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Better are just going against Josh Rosen there. It may not show too much in the number yet because we've juiced it up uh, three to minus 125, but uh, that's been the number one right now. 
Yeah, the Arizona things are not good there. I I do a weekly show out of Arizona, and I, you know, I feel bad every week that I got to just trash the Cardinals. I, I took I took them last week and got to cover because I just couldn't lay the that many points with the Bears and Trubisky. But it, they almost gave it away <laughs> at the end of that game. Oh, yeah, I, I was wait. I was yeah. I was playing cards. Uh, it, it actually at the Venetian and your uh, sports book is, you know, right next door to the poker room. And when that interception was heading back there, that sports book was complete pandemonium until they saw the flag <laughs> with that. There was a lot of Chicago betters in your book uh, Sunday at the Venetian. Yeah, you couldn't have been more off sides than uh, <laughs> Mac was in that play. He was a good, uh, what, two, three steps there into the backfield. You know? Yeah, but, you know, when they saw the guy running, everybody that had the Bears, they, oh, they, yeah. were, they were cheering. I, and that's the funniest part of being, if, if you've never been to Vegas, you've got to watch a Sunday or a Saturday in football season at the sports book and, and just see, you know, and you think about, you know, it's not even betting. You know, I know in a perfect world you guys would love to see right down the middle betting because, you know, you, you, you make 10%. You don't have to sweat anything. But uh, you watch the games there and see the, the people, the fans, for whichever score it is, you know the percentage right away of where the money's at on that game. William, tell us what's happening at uh, CG. Yeah, yeah, well, just a uh... – you know, elaborate on that. Um, you know, it's, it's unavoidable to and sometimes to get a position on the game. No matter what number you put out there, it's just going to uh, always going to be a, some games is going to end up being a big liability no matter how you set the price on a game. And it's funny how games you never predict it would end up that way, do end up that way. Chicago, Arizona, we said it before the year, no chance of that happening, being a big liability. But it then turned out that way. Uh, but, yeah, this is a great weekend. I, I'm excited. You got baseball, uh, you know, some – Playoff spots still up for grabs. Uh, of course, you know, college football, NFL. Don't forget NBA preseason starts. NHL preseason is in full swing now. You got the, the Vegas Knights uh, be playing this weekend. Uh, you know, got the Premier League, MLS. If I leave anything out, you guys can throw it in there. Uh, you know, it, it's just a great weekend. Uh, my favorite time of the year. I'm sure you guys love this, too. Um, you know, uh, definitely you want to download an account and sign up for an account at your nearest CG book. That's how you bet, uh, you know, in 2018 and certainly how you bet with this many games going on. William, I do have a question and one you forgot was the Ryder Cup. But yes. Is, yeah. is, 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 the, is the time difference being in France and, and with this football season, has it diminished what you would normally take on a Ryder Cup? I mean, it's... it's so you mentioned that I saw a thing on it this morning. I was reading about it. Other than that, I haven't heard too much. So it's definitely affecting uh, the handle and certainly the viewing of it being, uh, you know, over in France there. So it's being, I guess, somewhat like almost like a big soccer tournament with the same time time frames there. Before I let you go, William, you you talk about downloading the app, and I want to tell our listeners because you know most of our listeners are not right here in Las Vegas, and they think that you have to have the app you know, living in Las Vegas, if you come visit and we get a lot of people, you know, you know, the weekend warriors that come in from California and Arizona, don't stand in line. It's idiotic. Download the app. You can load it, fund it when you get to town. So take you the same amount of time to fund the app as it would be to get in line and make bets. Get in line once. (laughs) Get in line once, fund it, and then, you know, the win or lose, it's money's going right right there in the account. And then when you're ready to leave town, go back to the window, and it's like cashing a ticket. Just take your money back out. Uh, it's a necessity. Uh, absolutely. You have the account. It's yours forever. You, you put your money in. You cash it out. And then you can watch the games wherever you want while you're in town so you're not wasting time, uh, you know, standing in line. You'd be out to dinner wherever you are. You certainly maximize your, your time on your trip. And benefit from live betting, I'll tell you what. I love taking twenty one fifty. 21-point favorites in college football that I don't bet. Let the other team score first on a fluke play. Grab the extra advantage to yeah. that, and I think it's one of the best values betting in college football. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You still have pretty much the full game to go, and, and when well, you're still in the game, it's not a, you know, it's basically like a tie game in a sense with the fluke play. Absolutely. Will, thanks for stopping by. We look forward to having you on the show down the road again. We love going behind the counter, and our uh, listeners love to get that little peek behind the window as well. Good luck to you on all the games that I am not on. 
<laughs> I can't wish you luck on the games I have. You know how right. that is, yeah. Will. I'm sure we'll be on the same ones, <laughs> similar ones. It's always a pleasure, guys. Looking forward to the next time. Thanks, All right, Will. William. Hey, we're going to step out for a quick break, guys, and when we return, we're going to go to Handicapper's Corner. We're going to preview those big college football games this week. Two big ones, and then we got two interesting NFL games with Mark Lawrence. With one of the legends in sports handicapping, Mark Lawrence. Absolutely. He's up next here on Wager Talk. It's Manic Monday, and that means every pick at wagertalk.com is just $9. Get a play in any sport valued at up to $30 for just $9 each and every Monday at wagertalk.com. Welcome back to the Wager Talk Podcast. It is time for Handicapper's Corner, and I am excited about this week's guest. I love when we have him on. It's Mark Lawrence. You can follow Mark on Twitter, at Mark Lawrence. Be sure to check out his website, playbook.com. Ton of information there. Uh, One of the longest-running newsletters in the industry, uh, something that uh, make sure I gander at each and every week. And, uh, Mark, good to have you on the show. Welcome back. Hey, my pleasure. As always, Marco, great to be on board with you guys here at Wager Talk and uh, really looking forward to this week's football card. You know, Mark and I go back a long way back when I lived in Cleveland. Mark's offices were in Cleveland. And, you know, the one thing I credit Mark with, besides being a great friend, is really a mentor. And when you read the Playbook newsletter, you have to remember there's value finding reasons to bet a play, and there's value to find reasons to not bet a play. And I came from North Coast Sports and Phil Steele Publications, and Phil liked a lot of favorites in his days, but reading the playbook really took it to a next level for me that if I liked the dog and Mark liked it, it was really a solid play. But there were a lot of favorites I liked, and Mark was the reason I didn't use those games. So, Mark, I appreciate that mentoring as we go, and the playbook newsletter is still one of the finest publications out there. Hey, Ralph, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And uh, sort of how I grew up is uh, from the school of less exposure is better, just given the fact that uh, you're better off not betting a lot of games, but instead isolating on the better, more powerful games, the quality rather than quantity. And in doing that, uh, that's what isolating live dogs can do to keep you off of some of those what look to be real popular public favorites. You know what? A lot of times we talk about specials that our guests offer at the end of the show, but I want to mention this at the beginning. Mark is one of the most gracious people you know in the industry, and Mark has an incredible offer where all of our listeners can get $100 worth of playbook tokens just for logging into a site. Mark, tell us how to do that now, please. It's real easy, Ralph. All you need to do is just log on to playbook.com, click on the register button. Once you're into the register button and you register to the site, then click on Get Tokens. You go to Get Tokens, and there'll be $100 in free tokens in your account. Just that easy. Good stuff, Mark. Appreciate that for our listeners. And, uh, Mark, we're going to start college football. This is the game on the card for Saturday. It is probably the... For me, I think this is the biggest game of the season to date. If you want to talk, and Dave said it on our show uh, earlier this week, Ralph, this is truly, in my opinion, a playoff game. Uh, For Penn State, it's an elimination game because Penn State, if they lose this one, they're not going to get any shot of getting into the playoffs because they get screwed every year, it seems. Uh, Ohio State, they could afford to lose this one and run the table and still be in the playoffs, but it's a big one. Mark, uh, I know you're a situational guy. You know, I look at a lot of situational stuff. When you're handicapping a game of this magnitude, and I know you're a guy that, you know, you like home dogs because, you know, the value in the crowd and that. I've asked everybody that I've interviewed this week the same question. When you're doing a Penn State home game, and it's a night game, and it's a whiteout, Do you factor any more into what you would allow for home field advantage? Because if you've ever been to Happy Valley at night when it's a whiteout, there's nothing else like it. 
Yeah, it's bedlam. It really is. Uh, you know, it's really. I think you have to add something to the to the factor for Penn State being at home in that particular situation. You can also just count on the fact that maybe Joe Paterno is no longer there, and he used to have that grass about an extra two or three inches higher for these football teams that come in off artificial surfaces. Uh, no longer being the case that way. But the bottom line here is Penn State will be up for this football game. The crowd will not let them do anything but. And, you know, you're talking about a team here that is more than capable of getting the act finished for for Penn State. I love the fact that uh, this football team has been on a major role since Trace McSorley has been their quarterback. One of the most astounding numbers that I've come across in doing that. I love the handicapped coaches. I love the handicapped quarterbacks. And if you look at Penn State with McSorley behind center, when they're coming off consecutive wins, they're 16 and two straight up and 17 and one to the spread. They just continue to keep rolling. This momentum just rolls and builds with this football team. This is Dwayne Haskins, who's going to be a terrific quarterback. Ralph knows this, and everybody from Ohio knows this. But this is his first true road start, and going into a whiteout situation like this, it could end up being his undoing here. Like you say, Marco, I'm a home dog kind of a guy, and this is a home dog that I kind of really like real well. You know, Mark, you mentioned that stat you had, and that's just one of the incredible stats that you have in every write-up in the Playbook newsletter. You read a write-up, and the thing that Mark does, which is different than most newsletters, is Mark gives you a reason to like a side, but he also brings to light the reasons that you may be concerned to take a side. So he's not afraid to give angles on the team that he likes and the opposite team to keep betters aware. I agree with you, Mark, that this Ohio State situation is tough. And to me, watching Ohio State the first three weeks, I think Nick Bosa was the best player in college football. He has an injury. He's out for the next few weeks, probably until November. They'll reevaluate at that time. But the Ohio State defensive line and defense as a whole is much different with what I have the best player in college football being out. That's a huge factor in handicapping the game because he will be a stud first round pick with probably a number one, two or three pick in the National Football League draft. He's that impactful. And you mentioned also, Ralph, the fact that we also want to call out the other side of the game, not just to be uh, falling in love with just one side of the game. There are attributes that Ohio State has and brings to this game. You know, Marco knows, I know, that they're probably arguably the best road team in college football. And, in fact, uh, when you look at this football team, when they've gone out in this particular role uh, as favorites of seven or less points, their murder in this particular role, Ohio State, is 14-1 and to the spread. So you've got to overcome that. They know how to win games on the road. But I think the situation being what it is, the whiteout, Dwayne Haskins' first road game, as you mentioned, no Bosa for Ohio State. I think those are mitigating factors that stack up well in Penn State's favor. Yeah, I'll throw one thing to chime in. I know you're a guy that uh, you go back and look at the stats of games and inside the stats, and you look at that TCU game. If TCU doesn't turn the football over three times in that game, they win that game. They put up 511 yards of offense against this Ohio State defense. I am not sold on the defense. Uh, they've played, you know, outside of the TCU game. They've played a pretty soft schedule. They're going to get tested on Saturday night against Penn State. And as you said, Penn State has a chip on their shoulder. This is a team that for the last three years has been one of the most consistent programs in all of college football. And they just can't get inside that top four to get that playoff ranking. And that, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, whenever they had the bad loss to Michigan, that was the, the blemish on their card, and they lost to Pitt early in the year. And Ohio, even though they won the Big Ten and won the Big Ten championship game, Ohio State leapfrogged them to get the thing. And that's something they've never forgot. And uh, this has just become such a... Big rivalry for the Penn State side. Obviously, we know the rivalry for Ohio State is Michigan, but this is a game Penn State circles each and every year. I agree 100%, Marco. This is a game that uh, they'll they'll have no problem getting up for, and I'm sure James Franken will remind them that they're carrying a 16-game home win streak into this football contest here. They know how to take care of their home turf. And I don't want to beat a dead horse to death, but that whiteout is certainly going to help this football team. You know, one more shout-out to Mark, and one thing that he taught me is that revenge is probably the most misused term in handicapping in any sport. It doesn't matter. 
But Mark points out those situations, loan home, lost revenge, you know, not getting to a bowl because you lost that game, the final game of the season, the bowl revenges. That's just one more step that you learn reading the playbook newsletter each week. Well, we call it meaningful revenge, Ralph. And, uh, you know, if, if the revenge isn't meaningful, it's just another statistic. Uh, in the revenge that Penn State took to Ohio State last year, that one-point loss was their only loss, if you will, uh, or their first loss, I should say, of the regular season. They kind of bummed out the week after, went to Michigan State and forgot to show up. But it did snap that win streak for them, and it ruined that season, that chance they had to be a Final Four football team. Now, if, if whoever wins this game – Mark, you had a great point. If Ohio State loses this game, they'll probably likely still have a chance to make the playoffs. Penn State probably won't. But I see inside the Big Ten Conference this year a powerful conference that I'm going to I'm going to only guess that these teams are going to beat up on one another, cannibalize one another, if you will. And we could end up seeing nobody from the Big Ten in the college football playoffs because the big boys are going to keep pounding on one another here. So, you know, whoever loses this game, uh, keep an eye on that to see what happens with those football teams because they can't afford another loss, but I'm afraid it'll end up happening. You know, it pains me to do this, but I have to give a shout-out to Marco as well. And that Penn State situation last year is exactly what Marco says very often. It's a loss that cost you multiple losses. They lost to Ohio State, then they lost to Michigan State. Obviously, that situation is what occurred. And I had Michigan State yeah. in that game big the, the following week because I knew there was such a big game for Penn State. And then they, I caught a break in that game, too, which I think hurt Penn State. If you remember, that was a game that had the long delay they had a weather delay at Michigan State, you know, and they were in the locker room for over an hour. And, uh, it, you know, just changed the whole complexion of the game. But uh, got the win. I was happy with that. Mark, we're going to move to the next one. And this is a game that doesn't have conference, uh, you know, ties. But this is a game that we get to watch every year. Uh, Notre Dame, they play with Stanford. They, they have Stanford coming in off of a miracle of miracle wins last week (laughs) christmas came early for the cardinal and it's another elimination game we talked about it it's an elimination game for both teams with stanford and and notre dame with their aspirations it sure is you know uh, coming in here notre dame uh, real real pretty right now four and on the season what hurts this football team if they lose is they're not conference affiliated being an independent team, they're not going to have anybody else within the conference to have to uh, stay in front of, so this loss will go a long way. Stanford loses here. They fall back to Washington's category or status with one loss in the season here. And right now it's looking like a Pac-12 team with two losses isn't going to go anywhere. The question is, is a one-loss Pac-12 team going to make the college football playoff? So, as you say, a key critical game as far as their college football playoff aspirations are concerned. The way I look at the game here is uh, Stanford uh, is playing with house money coming into this game here. That win last week, as you mentioned, an absolute miracle of miracles. They got it. They probably feel pretty good about themselves. But they're going to go into a real tough situation here in Notre Dame. It's triple revenge for Notre Dame. They've been taken out three times in three seasons by Stanford here. And this is a Notre Dame football team that, guys, has got a really staunch defense. If you take a look at what they've done thus far this football season here, they held Michigan to a season-low 307 yards. Last week they held Wake Forest to a season-low 398 yards. The defense is what's really keying this football team. Then you start a new quarterback who gives them a spark last week, an Ian Book, and suddenly there's a new complexion about this football program as well here. I'm not real high on Stanford this season here, and I'm not terribly high on Notre Dame. I think they'll find a way to choke themselves out. But I think the situation being what it is, I'm going to stay at home with the Irish in the game. You know, Mark, I completely agree. Ian Book did make one start last year, and it was a very productive start at North Carolina, winning 33-10. to Well, his second start for Notre Dame at Wake Forest, 56-27. to You add in this week, they get Dexter Williams back, a running back that had 360 yards and averaged nine point two yards per carry he comes back from suspension and you know what say what you want about Bryce Love I love him he's a great running back but this year he sat out the UC Davis game 254 yards and 4.3 yards per carry are not Bryce Love numbers especially going on the road like you said against the staunch defense well you're talking about Bryce Love who I really admire as a person here 
he is not about himself whatsoever. He's totally about the team. He could care less about winning a Heisman Trophy. He knows his career isn't forward ahead of him. He's going to be playing in the National Football League on Sundays. So sitting out a football game voluntarily, you know, he's not out there to pad his stats. I like him and I admire him for what he's done. But the bottom line here is those the numbers he's bringing in this game are not all inspiring. They're nothing that's going to have, keep Notre Dame up at night awaiting the arrival of Bryce Love and Stanford in this football game. Moving to Sunday, uh, we've got a game that interesting, and it's your backyard. We've got the Miami Dolphins. We're going to find out this week if they're legit or not. They're 3-0. and and they're not getting any respect because they haven't beaten any quality teams. Tennessee, uh, I'm not, you know, I know they've won a you know, game uh, or two, but they're, they haven't impressed me. You look at the Jets, they're, you know, playing with a rookie. And then last week, Oakland, who is 0-3. This could be the biggest counterfeit 3-0 and NFL team or – this could, we could be after this week say, man, what a steal this was with the Dolphins plus a six and a half, seven points at New England. Where do you stand on this one, Mark? I'm with you, Marco, in the first half of the statement you made. I think Miami's a fraud this football season here. I'm not a big Adam Gase guy. Uh, I think he has this deer in the headlights looks for a reason. Uh, there's reasons that players that have wanted to leave this football program, the good players that have left this football program here, Ajayi and the Dadakam Sioux, uh, Landry wanted out. You know, they're just not on the same page with the coach. I think he's an excellent offensive coordinator. I think he's a, in a Peter Principal role that he's elevated himself to a status I don't know if he's capable of handling. They've gotten to 3-0 and this year because of the really, as you mentioned, the very soft schedule. But my goodness, you look at the last two games, the Jets and Oakland, two football teams that will definitely be home for the playoffs planning on next year's draft. And they were drowned in the stats in both of those games were the Dolphins. Uh, now they're going to catch a very angry New England football team who, by the way, has never lost three games in a row with Tom Brady behind center in a division game. He's been there five times. He's won and covered all five of those division games in this particular role. I also have to also preface this by saying that I have New England on my play against list. I think uh, this is a football team that's deteriorating, and I think they're going to really struggle to make the playoffs this year. But the situation being what it is, I do not want Miami Dolphins on my ticket this week. This goes back to what Rolf said earlier on in the show. There are certain cases you can make for teams to keep you out of dogs, and the case being the situation here, it keeps me out of the Miami Dolphins. You know, we do have to mention that you look at the yards per game diff for these NFL teams after three games. Arizona is horrific. They're minus 200 yards per game. But second last in the NFL is Tom Brady and the New England Patriots minus 107 yards per game. That is just a number that is just mind-boggling to me. It is, and it's an indication of what's going on in New England. He has no wide receivers. He's going to be having to count on what might be Josh Gordon. We don't know if his hamstring is going to even allow him to play this week. I I sort of thought the hamstring was kind of a made-up story by him in Cleveland, but, you know, the Browns got tired of his act, and I think Bill Belichick will eventually do that too. But they're they're in dire straits right now at at the wide receiver position until they can get Elvin back. So if you do see Josh Gordon in the starting lineup this week here, it's going to really benefit Tom Brady. Yeah, you know, for people that didn't watch the New England-Detroit game, New England, you're going on the road to Detroit, and they had three wide receivers on their roster. That shows you just how, how, how they lack depth. I mean, most NFL teams play four wide receivers at some point in the game, but to you to make a road game in a dome situation where the weather isn't a factor and only to bring three wide receivers shows you just how uh, that unit is in despair. Marco, what's your take on the game? I'm curious to see what you have to say about this football game because, you know, we talked earlier together on Gill's podcast and it was a game of consideration of a favorite that looked like they could lose the game straight up. I don't recall if this was your, yeah, your this side is, or this not. This is the one. I, I took Miami in this one, and, I, and I'll tell you why. I look at this game, and, Mark, I sit down at, when I put the lines in my book at the beginning of the week. I look at all of the games, and I try to say, okay, of all of these games – which is the game that is the automatic play, looks the easiest for John Q. Public to take a teaser on. And then I, when I discover that game, 
I look real hard at the dog because I'm going to, and we just had uh, William Bernicke on from uh, CG Canter Gaming here in Las Vegas. And I asked him this very question. I said, I can see Sunday morning, you guys are going to need the Dolphins for your lives because every John Q. Public guy is going to walk to the window, look up there and see the six and a half or seven and take that six point teaser and take Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and say they're not going to lose three games in a row. And that is just what they're going to do when they walk to the window. And I, if this game comes home, the books are going to be hearting uh, with New England. They made a ton of money on Sunday night with uh, New England losing to the Lions being a, uh, a situation that uh, just didn't, uh, you know, they played horrible. And at some point, we're going to say – the window is closed on the Patriots. I know, you know, we said that a couple different times, and they've proved us wrong. But this is an off season with the Patriots that we've never seen before. There's not, you know, you don't have uh, Robert Kraft, Belichick, and Brady all on the same page. Uh, we saw a lot of turmoil last year when they traded Garoppolo, and I just think we're see- we're getting closer to the end with the Patriots. And uh, I was on the under with the Patriots this year uh, as far as season win totals. So I'm happy with the way they're playing right now. If I had to play this game, uh, I would be on the Dolphins, but it's not a game that I think is going to make my card on Sunday. Well, let me say this. Uh, if I had to play the game, I wouldn't. Uh, and I'm only, only going to use the Miami situation to keep me out of the dog. Not that I'm going to make a case for New England here, but just to keep me out of the Miami dog. It's more important. And that, that's a good lesson, Mark, for our listeners. You know, everybody says you want to find a winner. You want to find a winner. Well, when you find a winner, if you're if somebody, you know, you play one unit, you make one unit. But when you find a game that you decide not to play because there's too many variables or question marks both ways and you don't play anything, you're at zero. But if you had the wrong side, you saved yourself minus 1.1. And all those minus 1.1s, when you don't force a play, add up, and at the end of the year can be the difference of where you made your money or didn't make your money. Because it's That's on a great TV. Point. You know, it's all about exposure, as we talked yeah. about earlier here. Just uh, uh, limiting your exposure to make your quality plays maximize your profits. You know, Mark, uh, full disclosure, I picked this next game out because I'm a fan of yours. I'm a friend of yours. For those that are playbook followers, for those that follow Mark, this lines up just to be like a, a Mark Lawrence game of the year. <laughs> It's the Monday night game. It's a division home dog. It's a D, it's a KC team that has the worst defensive football, yet they're the road favorite. Tell us your thoughts on KC at Denver. Ralph, what do I have to say? You just said it all. <laughs> uh, you know, this is the kind of a football game that really excites me because of uh, the, 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 pop- uh, the popular public perception of the favorite here in Kansas City here. Everybody's talking about the job that Patrick Mahomes is doing, and he's doing a terrific job. There's no question about that. But, you know, he's the first quarterback talked about in every conversation this football season here. Everybody is dismissing the Denver Broncos right now for the moment here, and they're a team that I had picked to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl this year. I went out on a limb to do just that, and it was largely because I felt New England was going to struggle to make the playoffs. And I like the situation with Denver here. I like the fact that they brought in Case Keenum to solidify this offense here. I like the fact that uh, in, the, in the draft they picked up Chubb to really really make this defense uh, maybe arguably the best defense in the National Football League, and I think we're going to see that by season's end. Then you take a look at what you've got, a division home underdog against a defenseless road favorite. And uh, defenseless to the point where not only are they the worst defense in the league, but their best defensive effort of the year came last week when they coughed up 27 points and 406 yards. That's not going to make it in this football game here. I love Case Keenum being under the radar. Everybody's talking about Mahomes not giving Keenum any credit, none whatsoever here. I make Denver a live home dog in the game, and I will not be at all surprised if they take the Chiefs down. So, Mark, you're telling me that a defense... Okay, this is a three and O team. If I gave you this numbers, I would think I would think ten out of ten people tell me this is an O and three team. You're allowing thirty one first downs, you're allowing five point two yards per carry, and you're allowing sixty six percent completions. Oh, 
<laughs> Ralph, it's what I call a tape job. You know, you put yeah. tape over the names of the teams, then you look at what you're what you've got. You know, what what are you dealing with here? And if you put tape over the names of these teams, you would have the Denver Broncos a three and a half point favorite in this football game. But it's all about perception, and the perception here is Kansas City's in this major run. Uh, you know, I've I've written a lot about Andy Reid and the success that he's had. He's had great success on the road. There's no refuting that, but. He's involved in more football games where he loses the stats and wins the yards than any coach I've ever seen in my life. He's doing it again this year. He's been outgained in all three football games. I know it's attributable to special teams. A lot of it is uh, in big plays. But the bottom line here is you still have to do it the old uh, Smith-Barney way. You have to earn it. You have to do it on the field there. And that's what the Denver Broncos do with this defense. So it's a tape job special for me with the Denver Broncos. Yeah, I'm in agreement. Uh, We'll make it unanimous, just like we did on the podcast podcast we did earlier today uh together mark denver broncos anytime you can give me the better defense getting points at home and make it a spotlight game like a monday night football game i'm gonna line up there and mahomes has done everything good there's nothing you can say wrong about what he's done 13 touchdown passes to zero interceptions but all i'm gonna say is it was against the la chargers at L.A., where they have zero home field advantage. Then they played the Steelers, my Steelers, which I've talked about their defense, how bad it's been. And then last week, San Francisco, who doesn't have a good defense either and lost their quarterback in the game. Now you've got to do it. And if they do it this week, you know, I might just go out and buy myself a Mahomes jersey because he (laughs) is the real deal. If he can go into a mile high and get it done in this atmosphere on a Monday night football. He's never been on a stage like this and everybody's talking about him. We'll see if he can do it. It's going to be a fun game uh, for Monday night football. I've had two and I just want to Ralph's going to jump in. No, here. you know, one more layer to this game and just a final note on the Monday night game. Let's also remember Denver is home for a third time in four weeks, the first four weeks of the season. KC's on their third road game the first four weeks of the season. Just another layer of advantage for the home team. That's an excellent point. Uh, You know, one football team comfortable at home in their own skin, sleeping at home. The other guy on the road, again, if you will, the old Willie Nelson's trait or the old Willie Nelson song. (laughs) That's a great point, Ralph, about the scheduling dynamic within the game. And I want to remind our listeners to go to uh, playbook.com and check out that uh, fantastic offer, Mark. Tell us, our listeners, one more time how they can get that $100 worth of tokens. Uh, real easy, guys. Just log on to the website, playbook.com. Click on the register button. You sign up. There's no cost at all to register. Once you click on the register button, then click on the Get Tokens link. Either the Get Tokens link or there's a tokens banner on top of the homepage. Click on either one. Once you do that... As being a registered member, you'll find $100 of tokens in your account. You know, one more thing to remember is, you know, people know the Playbook newsletter or the Playbook magazine on, uh, you know, on the newsstands. But Marco and I are both part of the Wise Guys. You also sell the Wise Guy report. It's the top handicappers in the country. And you sell the Wise Guy report. Tell our listeners about that. The second half of the year, those cappers that are on top, putting out those important plays to win a significant prize is is a great way to get some value at the end of the football season. Unquestionably, it's probably the biggest bang for your buck. It's 50 people competing in a $10,000 prize for the best uh, record all season long. Everybody submits two plays, a double play best bet, and a single play. You can buy the entire report, receive all 50 plays. That's 100 plays you're getting from 50 handicappers. Uh, You can check that out at playbook.com, where you will find Marco D'Angelo on the leaderboard. There you go. Appreciate that. Oh, I didn't know that. (laughs) I wouldn't have brought that up. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Mark. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you stopping by, as always. Look forward to having you uh, on again down the road in the season, and best of luck uh, this weekend with all your games and uh, in the future. Uh, Again, Mark Lawrence, one of the best in the business. We're going to step out or take a break. When we come back, uh, Ralph, Dave, and myself will be breaking down the college football for this weekend here on the Wager Talk podcast. Every Tuesday, wagertalk.com offers a best bet selection from its hottest handicapper. It's a great way to introduce yourself to wagertalk.com with a big best bet winner for just $2 on $2 Tuesday. 
Welcome back. It's time for us to head to college football. And before we do, I want to tell you about a special offer you can get if you head over to uwager.eu. You can get a 70% sign-up bonus up to $1,000. Open up a new account. Use promo code WT70. Get a 70% sign-up bonus up to $1,000. Check it out. That's an exclusive for our Wager Talk listeners. Guys, it's college football on Saturday, and we are going to take a look at first one on the docket, West Virginia and Texas Tech. I'm going to go to you first, Ralph. You look at this West Virginia team. We really don't know how good they are. They've done everything asked of them, but now you look at that first win at the beginning of the season against Tennessee, looked pretty good at the time. Not so much anymore as Tennessee has gone backwards. Well, you have probably the most dynamic pass-catch duo in the country in West Virginia with Greer and and the wide receiver. But, you know, Texas Tech, I think, is a live live home dog here. West Virginia started off against that Tennessee game, and yes, they look good against Kansas State winning 35-6. But a closer look at that Kansas State game shows they only had a 140-yard edge and they were plus three turnovers, so a big difference in that game. I like the Red Raiders to pull the upset here. Dave, uh, what do you think? You know, I, I mean, if you look at the data, uh, you say, well, you know, this is a toss-up in Texas Tech plus the points is therefore live at home. But, you know, this is just something that, that, that nags at me. Since Cliff Kingsbury got there, how many big games has this team won? Now, I know they beat Oklahoma State last week, but I think this is a bigger game, and I just don't trust the Red Raiders in big games. I think Kingsbury can get out-adjusted. He we've seen it time and again, him get out-adjusted in games. And by the way, a great example of this was the last meeting last mm-hmm. year between Texas Tech and West Virginia. I had the game. I had Texas Tech plus the points in that game. They're way ahead. And then he made a bad decision in the third quarter from a strategic standpoint. Then the team got conservative, and they lost. They just com- completely lost their, their momentum. And West Virginia goes on and wins the game, and I lost my bet, and I still haven't forgotten that. And it's not that I'm holding it. Well, I'm not holding a grudge. It's nothing like that, because it's just one game. But I saw Holgerson completely outmaneuver Kingsbury. And in a game that figures to be close again, I've got to go with the guy I trust more on the sidelines to make the crucial decision that might provide the path to the winner's circle in this game. And the more experienced quarterback well, doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, look, yeah. The, the kid at freshman at, at, at Texas Tech, he has looked terrific. But this is still this is a pretty big step up. And since you can look at last week's game and say, well, that was a little bit of an upset, because I think most people thought Oklahoma State would beat him. It's tough to do it two weeks in a row against high-level competition. I've got to look at the West Virginia side here. Not a strong opinion, but I would lean Mountaineers. You know, Dave, let me go one step further. It may be three weeks in a row because, remember, they were uh, uh, behind against Houston. And well, they came right. back and won yeah. that game as well. I don't it think wasn't Houston's quite an upset, team, but... but still, it took that mentality to yep. go for a third straight week. You go back to the game that you were talking about last year in Morgantown. They were up 35-24, to 24, Man, Texas Tech. They, they, were, they, got they, outscored, they got outscored 22 to nothing in the fourth period in that game. And that's four straight wins now for West Virginia over Texas Tech. So you look at it. My thing with Texas Tech is I was impressed with last week. They put up 621 yeah. yards of offense they against Oklahoma good. State. Here's the thing, though. which Where is Oklahoma State at? Uh, two weeks ago when they played Boise, everybody was on the Boise bandwagon. We all thought this Oklahoma State team wasn't as good, and what they do, they steamrolled Boise. So now you get high on Oklahoma State, and then they turn around and get rolled by Texas Tech. So they're not as good as they were, obviously, in the Boise game, but they're not as good as they showed, or not as bad as they showed last week against Texas Tech either. This is a tough game. In a coin flip, I'm inclined to lean to the points, but I just don't, I, I just don't trust Texas Tech. You know what? You know, Marco, let's let's go to the next game here and go to the Pac-12. And, you know, we look at the situation, and USC uh, was a money burner last year going 3-8 and eight against the spread. And this year, oh, yeah, 0-4 oh against the spread. So they're 3-12 and 12, their last their – last, uh, that's what, 3-12, and 12, 15 games? Yeah. yeah. So And now they go on the road. They had to come from behind wind against Washington State. 
What do you make of this Pac-12 South showdown? Well, I'm not high on USC to start with. This is a team that they haven't shown me anything. They're not running the football, and that's not USC football. I mean, we know that they, they've got quarterbacks all the time, and they got the highly touted freshman JT Daniels, but you cannot – put everything on him not at this level it's not ready for that you got to have some balance on offense and they're not getting it my question and is driving me crazy the good news is arizona finally ran the football last week they put up a, against it was oregon state but they put up a ton of yardage on the ground this is this team's bread and butter the only problem was tate didn't carry the football in the game i don't understand what's going on Dave, is you know, is there an injury that we don't know about? No, because I, I, I just it's... don't understand why you would totally change somebody that came into the season full of hype for the Heisman. I mean, what he did last year for Arizona when he took over as quarterback, this team's offense changed dramatically overnight, and they're not using him at all in the fashion they did well, last I, year. Okay, so here's what I think took place. And this is just as a as an impartial observer. I don't have any particular information on this. It's just the way I see it. I think Sumlin came in and his attitude was, I'm going to try and make Tate more a pro prospect than he is. Because as good as he was last year, this is not a guy who NFL scouts are wild about. Right. Uh, he's, he's a guy who has to throw on the move. He's not really a pocket guy. And, you know, they, they just look askance at that type of player. And I think he designed the offense early to showcase Tate's abilities as a pocket passer. He's just not that good. Okay, You get him back in his element where he's creating chaos on the fringes, and he's a dynamite college football quarterback. That's not an insult to him that he's not. I don't think he's an NFL guy. He's just, it's, you know, he's, he's probably smart enough. He's probably got the legs. He's just not a real accurate pocket passer. And I don't know how you fix that, okay? You either are or you're not. Daniels, uh, good good game by him last night, uh, last week for USC. I know they, they didn't get the cover, but that was a good performance against Washington State. Uh, <clears throat> but USC still isn't running the ball real well. And you can argue that Mike Leach, and he's done this before, as good as Mike Leach is, he is one of those coaches who has to show everybody how smart he is. And I thought his play calling in the last offensive series for Washington State probably cost him the football game. Okay, uh, I have no idea why all of a sudden Washington State turns into a running team on second and third in the red zone. Throw the ball! That's what you do! Okay, and then they miss the field goal, and that's the end of the game. Uh, that, that was, I thought that was a horrible coaching job by Leach. I, I don't know. still didn't get the award for the worst coaching job in the Pac-12 last week. <laughs> no, 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 he didn't. No, that's, that's been ne- renamed the Mario Cristobal <laughs> when take a goddamn knee award. Uh, I don't know what to do with this game. USC hasn't shown me much, and neither has the other team. So what do you do? I mean, it's, it's, it, I think USC's got more talent. If I had to play the game, I'd go Trojans, but I don't have to play it, and I'm not. Ralph, for me, I'll kick it to you to see how you like it. You got two two and two teams, and you've got the road team as the favorite. To me, the road team is only the favorite because of name. I think Arizona showed some life last week. Granted, it was Oregon State, but it was on Oregon State on the road. Yeah, and that's they, a different they, scenario. It's, it's a better steam, scenario. They steamrolled them. I think they could build something. And if and I just don't want to miss that game when they finally. Turn Tate loose. At some point, he has to. you got to think that it's going to happen. And if it happens, this is a totally different team, and then you're going to be kicking yeah. yourself, wow, I, Arizona plus points, this was a gift. I'm leaning Arizona. But you don't want to play the guessing game. You don't want to say he's probably going to do it. You want to wait till it happens it and then happens, jump yeah. on it right. So, but I just cannot back USC. I'm not an Arizona fan here. I have the same thoughts as Tate. Dave and I talked about it on the radio show today that, you know, he has 23 carries. 23 carries through four games. That's crazy. But, listen, USC had 332 yards against Stanford, 317 yards against Texas, 354 yards against Washington State. They got outgained versus Stanford. They got outgained versus Texas. They got outgained versus Washington State. To go on the road and win a game is hard to do. Until TJ Daniels, TJ Daniels tells me he can go win that game, I have to back the home dog. No question. 
All right, let's head to the last one, guys. And we're going to take a look. Stay in the uh, Pac-12. And, well, we talked about the coaching award. Dave, I'll let you open it up with uh, Oregon at California. And take a knee. Let's all take a knee. Well, no, all he had to do was dance around in the pocket. You know how quarterbacks will do it. I mean, they couldn't just – he couldn't take an immediate knee. But you you run those little three or four second plays, and that's it. The game's over. And you throw 50 yards downfield. You you you, you yeah, flank yeah, out to the right, gonna be, and you throw fifty so yards little time field. left. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about under ten seconds on the fourth quarter uh, on the fourth down play. And and he, you know if there's slow, slow spot in the ball, then it's, it, the game's over. They don't even go to a fourth down. But if that happens, it, it is one of those situations where you can just throw it as far as you can, and, then, and that's the end of the game. Um, you don't. I, it, I'm, I'm sorry. It was just, Cristobal screwed up the game. This is. It's going to be interesting to see how hard Oregon reacts to this. Now, look, they've got the best player on the field in the quarterback. He's terrific. Herbert's a really good player, and he's healthy again, and he was outstanding last week. But there's a lot of things going against Oregon here. You've got that, that first game off a terrible loss. You've got California in, in – uh, Cal's one of the – some. There's, I'm an old guy, and uh, – and I've built up a pretty good contact list over the years. And it probably works better for college basketball because a lot of the news is sometimes under the radar. But I, Cal's one of the schools where I, I do get pretty good information. And one of the things that they've been selling this week is that nobody respects us. And I, I, don't, know, I don't know whether they've specifically used the Las Vegas line mm-hmm. as a thing. That, but Holtz used to do that. One of the old things that Holtz used to do at Notre Dame or in Arkansas, or wherever he was, was he'd find out what the point spread was. He'd get it out of the newspaper. Remember the old latest oh, yeah. line thing in the newspaper? He'd get it out of that. And he'd, if they were favored, uh, uh, he'd get in the locker room. And he, and he used to do this. I, uh, he'd say, oh, boy, they got the odds wrong on this game because this opponent, you know, whoever it is, yeah. it could be the little sisters of the poor, but yeah. they're real good. And when his team was an underdog, he'd use the old, they don't respect us at all. <laughs> And it used to work. He used to get his team fired up. Mm-hmm. And this is one of those situations where you can go that route with Cal. They've played well so far. You know what else he used to do? Every bowl season, somebody got suspended the week before. He grabbed his yeah. team's attention. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. You well, talk about... Listen, he might have talked funny. Yeah. He was a great coach. But he was a good college He wasn't much of an NFL coach, but he was a very good college football coach. Oregon has that. Uh, uh, Cal can sell that no respect angle to themselves this week. Because they aren't getting any respect, and they actually have played well. Here's their chance to go out and prove it, and they are catching Oregon in a pretty good spot as far as the the home side is concerned. I think on paper, Oregon might be the better team, but under the conditions, I think California is the right side. Cal, this is, you know, you look at Cal in this one, and they catch Oregon, as you say. The phrase I want to use, Oregon can lose this game twice, the last week's game twice, if they come out flat in – California's defense, although they've played a weak schedule so far, they have the sixth best defense yards per play in the nation at 4.2 yards per play. And they also they completely shut down BYU. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying BYU is a great team, but they completely shut down this BYU. This is still a BYU team that went on the road and beat Wisconsin, no matter what. And beat Arizona, too. The, you know, let's compare schedules. Cal's played a tougher schedule. They played North Carolina and BYU. Oregon has yet to leave home. They played Bowling Green, Portland State, San Jose State, and they finally had one team in San Jose, in Stanford. So I think Cal is the team here. Cal was 4-0 as a home dog last year. I think them, they have the mentality to improve. I think Oregon's in that bad position. And listen, Bobby, Bobby Herbert might be a great quarterback, but he was completing under 60% of his passes against those three sister of the poor teams. That shows there's a problem for me, especially now making his first road start. I like the Golden Bears. Dave, one last thing I'll throw to you. We had a guest on the radio show this week, Dave Bartow. They right. talked about buys in the, the month of September, how they're not a good thing. There's a couple instances where I do – I in theory, I agree with that. They're better later in yes. the season for teams. They're banged well, up. They need to rest. Yeah, yeah, it's a physical thing. But I treat buys the same in the NFL and college. If teams go into a buy on a bad note, it's a positive because they have that extra time to fix the problem and come out focused. If they go in on a roll, to me, it's a momentum stopper. But there's one other angle here, and it applies to this game. 
they had the two weeks off to prepare for an opponent, an opponent that they're not going to look past because this is their conference opener. That's a big game. Conference opener at home, big game. I like having the two weeks to prepare for this one. So it's one of those where I would put an asterisk to an angle that, you know, he talked about that made sense. Yeah, I think I, if Cal can't win here, then I guess they're not that good because this is a spot that, to me, they're supposed to win the game. Me and my buddy that goes back, he's one of the guys that's on uh, the site, Executive Sports. We used to call a game like this for California. This is their legitimizer. Yeah. This is the game where they if need. You, if you want, win, if you, you want respect, yes. this is the one you got to get. That's so. the one. And Cal's been talking that. That's what they're talking about. Is hey, we're getting overlooked. Nobody, nobody's talking about us. All right. Well, we're, we're going to talk about. We're talking about you now. Go out and prove it. All right. Hey, that wraps up the college segment for uh, this week. We're going to head to a quick break. When we come back, NFL action. We got some doozies to talk about in the NFL. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the Wager Talk Podcast. We're going to head to the NFL, and we've got, well, I don't know if you want to really call this a great game, but I had to do it. We had to cover this game. We got Ralph in studio, longtime Cleveland Brown fan. They got the win, and Ralph, I talked about it on videos because you did the video with uh, Brian. I, I paired you two guys up for this game, and I got to tell you, Dave, you were already gone from videos yesterday. I was on the strip last Thursday night when that game was going on with our buddy Brian Leonard. He's sporting the, the Cleveland Brown uh, jersey and everything. Yeah. One, probably the only time in my life that I've ever seen Brian treated like a rock star on the strip. <laughs> Everybody after the game was coming up, high fiving him with his, you know, the jersey and everything. You know, everybody loves a lovable well, loser, and, and, I guess. And, and, look, it, this was this really was a for, for Browns fans a really huge win. I happen to uh, uh, there's a place there's a few Cleveland themed bars around town. One of them has a restaurant attached to a place called Giuseppe's, uh, not far from where I live. And I was okay. hungry after the game, and I, had, I wasn't even thinking about I've been the connection. To Giuseppe's is not a bad place. No, it's good. Uh, so I, uh, I'm going to go over there and get some uh, get some food, and I'd forgotten that it's a Cleveland themed bar. And I pull into the parking lot. Now this is close to nine o'clock on a thir- um, uh, uh, on a Thursday, right? Right. It's usually not real jammed at nine o'clock. The parking lot is completely packed. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? And then I realized, oh, this is a Browns bar. I've been and I go in. Time. and You'd have thought it was New Year's Eve in there. I mean, they're just. Well, did, did you stay and watch uh, the game? No, the game was over. Oh, at nine. Okay, yeah, the game was yeah. over. I, I, they're still celebrating though, uh, and. Uh, no, it was fun. I, it, was, it was fun to be there. I, I, it, it's never a bad thing to watch fans celebrate, uh, especially when they're you're not smug about it. Let's you know, because some fans sometimes we're the we're the best. Yeah. These fans were really enjoying themselves, and I'm, I was happy. For and, them. and the people that were congratulating Brian, they were sincere because yeah. I mean, it was like it, it was t- like people listen, rooting for the Cubs when they won the World Series. You it's know, tough hey, being a hey, Cubs. It was <laughs> no, against the I, Indians. I, well, I think we when, had the streak too. You know, <laughs> if, if if the Browns get hot and everybody will say, "Well, it's just a bunch of bandwagon jumpers," yeah. but when you're wearing Browns gear now. Mm-hmm. It means you've been a fan for a while, and to me, that's the fan who deserves a lot of respect for hanging in there. But I'll give you a tip. Uh, if Brian ever tells you, hey, you want to go out and celebrate a big win with me, tell him no. Why? Because I gave. I said, where do you want to go? We were on the strip. We saw a show All that right. night. I said, where do you want to go? We got the whole strip. He took me to frickin' White Castle. <laughs> I, Dave's I, I lips have never tasted like yeah, yes. Oh. I, I I can't make this shit up. I, I wish I could. I got to tell you, I, that, I, I know this is going to offend some some people, but your <laughs> your taste is in your ass if you think those hamburgers are good. I'm sorry. I know, they're, yeah. they're, you know when they're good. I you know when it. they're good. When you've had too much to drink, and I know going back two years, the bygone days <laughs> when I in, induced quite a bit of alcohol, it's like okay, yeah, sure they're good, and then we sober. It's like uh, what? <laughs> This, it, I thought this was good. So I can go ahead and cross White Castle off prevent potential sponsors for the podcast. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 I don't, I, when I do a testimonial, it's for something I actually do believe in. And, <laughs> and White Castle's uh, not going to be. You know, not, unless, unless we're also, uh, unless we're also doing an ad for, uh, 
Oh, no, I, I just don't want to gross people out. <laughs> so, uh, you know. Well, let me tell you what. I, What's the, the best stuff tweet? That, the best let, tweet of all time, and this is all, and this and I know where you're going. But my some buddy kind of Mark, a product that stops you up if you have a problem. Yeah, well, okay. What, yeah. I, I don't even yeah. know what the names of these products are. Amodium AD. It yeah. would be a, t- yeah. a, a, my, a tandem my, testimony. The, my buddy Mark Meltzer, he. He tweets all kinds of stuff around Vegas. He's a guy, you know, this and that. He sure, his Twitter handle because he's a great follow. He is. Uh, what's at, Me- at Meltz? At uh, Meltz yeah. yeah, check him out. But he sent out a picture. It was Memorial Day weekend, and they had the White Castle food truck outside the D downtown. Downtown. He took a picture of the truck, and all he did in his tweet said, "If you're a fan of diarrhea." <laughs> Never truer tweet. Tweet. That's my favorite tweet of his of all time. But speaking of uh, you know diarrhea, let's go to this game. Oh, in the that's Oakland, right, in the football game. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, o- Oakland Raiders in Cleveland. So where's the leadoff here? Is it me? Well, I'm get, well it we're going to go to you since we lost Ralph for a okay. second. There. So all right. So I'll tell you what to do. And I was an idiot last week. I, I had a very good weekend, but the one game I missed on was the Raiders Dolphins. And I should have known it going in. Raiders' first half was the bet, not the full game. I think it's the same thing here. You've got the first-time starter on the road, which is still a negative situation in the NFL. And the Raiders are perfect in the first half. They've been a very impressive first-half team against quality competition. I think you play Raiders' first half here. And if you win it, that does set up a live middle possibility uh, or or, uh, a second-half wager, if you want to, on on the Browns. Uh, in the second half, because the Raiders have not been good after halftime. That's the way I look at this one. You know, Dave and I talked about this game on the radio as well, and I completely agree with his thought process. You know, the Raiders have been very good first-half team. They've played the number one strength of schedule, and they had the halftime lead in all three games. That's something to say. Now, the Browns have not won a non-AFC North Road game since 2014 when they beat Tennessee. Last week, I liked the Browns at home. But there's times that even if you like a game, I think you don't bet it until something happens. We talked about that with Arizona and their running quarterback. Mm -hmm. But now you're going on the road to win a road game with a quarterback making his first road start. Yes, I like the Browns. Yes, in my heart I want him to win. Yes, as a handicapper, I expect him to win. But in this situation, I can't back them until they finally win that road game. Show me they've taken that next step to the next level, and then I'll start backing them in that role. Not that Gruden's on any hot seat because he's no, got, he's, not. he's got you know, he's here to build this team. He's going to be with, here when they get to Las Vegas. But this is a game he really needs to get the fans. If he loses to the Browns and they start this season 0-4, and, and they're probably not going to be playing their last year in the Coliseum next year. No, and that's good... more strife, internal strife. They went to San Diego I, I, to see if they could play there. That's, so yeah, that's where you, they should There's play some next issues. Year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the, they could lose the fan base, really. I think they need this game. The only thing that the Raiders have been good at so far, when we, the games that I've watched them, is the scripted plays when they start the first and second half. The scripted plays are good. And the times that they've gone up tempo, they've car seems to excel better in the up tempo. The problem with going so people say, well, just go up tempo all the time. You can't do that, Dave, with this defense no. because this defense get, is horrible as and it, it is. puts them on it puts them on the field more. It's what Gase did with Miami last week yep. was he went up tempo and no huddle because he thought it might wear out the Oakland defense in that black heat jer- last black week. jerseys in the sun, man. Smart move. Absolutely. And it paid off. Because the Raiders get run over in the fourth quarter yeah. of that game. I lean to Oakland in this one, and definitely this is the one where you you go first half, but I like them full game too. You know, Marco, I know you had a big play on the Saints last week against Atlanta. You got it done in overtime. What a game. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh. And you know what? The Giants played an incredible game against the Dallas Cowboys. Now New Orleans is traveling up to the Northeast. You've had a good feel on this team. What do you think going I'll into tell this you week? What. I watched every single. Sorry, just to correct, correct the Giants uh, uh, played Houston. They played week. Houston. Last Mom, I'm sorry, week. Yeah. they were they, they, they were in Texas Dallas. for two right. straight weeks. Right. Dallas yeah. the week before. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. But this is a spot here where watching that game for me, just watching it, I was exhausted. Uh, these two teams, they went up and down the field and they played almost yeah. the full five quarters. Yeah. That was late into Very the overtime. 
after a game like that, it's got to be draining for both teams, the team that won the game yep. and the team that lost that type of game. And I got to tell you, the Saints offense came to life last week, but Atlanta's defense wasn't good either. But on the flip side, this is three straight games now. The Saints' defense has not stopped anybody. Cleveland moved the football on them. The Tampa Bay, you saw what they did against them the first week. That started Fitzmatrick, uh, you know, on his role against them. I do not trust the Saints going to the Giants. And what I saw last week from the Giants, this is the biggest takeaway I got from them. They went in and beat a Houston team that's winless. So a lot of people are not going to put a lot of stock Still in that. Still a win. It's a win. It got the momentum. But in the fourth quarter, they had the lead the whole way. But it got Houston scored and cut it to a one-possession game. And we've seen the Giants teams of the past, and I'm talking especially the last two years when it was McAdoo as the head coach, they would play not to lose Mm -hmm. instead of playing to win. They went down and answered that touchdown that Houston had all the momentum in the game. The old Giants would have been three and out and then lost the game. That showed me something about the new coaching regime, that things are changing in New York, and that win might be just what, remember, a lot of people in the offseason, this was their darling pick for the NFC East, was the Giants this year. If Eli doesn't have a big game against this defense, he should pull, what was the guy for Buffalo that retired at halftime a couple of weeks ago? That's what Eli should oh, do. Uh, yeah, uh, he should just. If he, come if he, on now, now, if he doesn't, Va- Vante, now you're just talking like you have you, you're on a food high or something. Oh, come Vante on. Davis. This, this defense is that bad. He has to put up numbers against this defense. They can't stop anybody. They don't have a pass rush. The secondary is bad. I like the Giants. They go in and win. And the other barometer, and I, you know, I like to look at different things, Dave. I don't use it as you know the final guide. But this game opened three and a half. And everybody that looks at it, they saw all the points that the Saints scored last week. And you know that it's been since two thousand, the last game of 2015 since the Giants have scored more than 30 points. Really? Who is going to want in a game? Yes. Wow. Who is going – they've gone like, two seasons, they haven't scored 30 points. Who is going to want to take this team in a shootout? But where did the money go so far in this game? It went from three and a half to three. And I can guarantee you that on Wednesday night and Thursdays, that's not John Q. Public betting New Orleans. They're worried about who they're betting tonight, the Thursday night game. They're not betting for Sunday already. That's sharp money, and I agree with that money. I like the Giants. I haven't uh, done anything with the game yet, so I'm not going to really talk about it. Uh, But uh, I think the spot does favor the Giants. One thing I do like and again, I, I haven't played it, so I've got more work to do in the game. But I do like teams off their first win under the new coach. It's it, it's kind of a buy sign on the team. That That is true at all sports, by the way. You got two of those this week, then. You got Detroit. Yep, yep. And, and they have, they have a chance, too. Yeah, yeah. They have, his old boss. Detroit yeah. has a very good yeah. chance to... Uh, mm-hmm. up, I know it's not a great spot for them scheduling dynamics-wise, but, you know, Dallas looks really bad, and Detroit can win that game. You want to talk about a team that needed that win on on national oh, TV? Boy. I mean, hats yeah. off to the Lions sure for doing glad that. Glad they got it because yeah. that, that capped off my weekend. I had a four percent play in the Lions, and I really did like that game, and I'm glad it worked out. You right. know, I I have gone back and forth in this game. To me, I have just not seen the Giants play back to back good games in years, <laughs> and it's tough to me to back them just because that reason. You would think that's silly. Well, you played well. You think that momentum carries over. Well, I've watched Eli in a lot of games, and when he has a good game, he always tends to regress and have a bad game. And while you say the Saints' defense has been horrible, they are only allowing foes 3.0 yards per carry, some of that because the other teams have thrown on him so much. I understand that part of the game. But, you know, they allowed 407 yards to Atlanta. That was a game they had 534 yards in. They finished plus 127 yards in the game. (coughs) Excuse me. I look at this game and I I still I think I think the New Orleans Saints are the better team. Yes, it's tough playing back to back road games, especially off. This is almost the same situation. Let's compare it to college. Stanford is on the road in an overtime win against their division foe Oregon, going to Notre Dame. Yes, the Saints are off a division win at Atlanta in overtime, now going to the New York Giants. So a comparison between sports. But 
I just cannot back the Giants because, you know, Barkley, yes, 4.7 yards per carry, but he's very he's much more dynamic than that when you watch his cuts. He's very good, but I cannot back Eli Manning in back-to-back games. It really is that simple for me. For me, it's, it's this simple. I can't lay points on a road with – a bad defense. You give me a home underdog with the better defense, I'm going to do that. And the Saints rank 32nd out of 32 teams yards per play. They may only be giving up three yards, as you said, on the ground, but their average yards per play, they're giving up 7.2 yards per play. All right, Mark. <laughs> that, that's three quarters of the way to a first down on every play. <laughs> let, me, let me just jump in before we get to this next game. And, you know, for those that follow me, at Cal Sports LV on Twitter. I did a tweet on this. And what these teams have done the last 19 games is absolutely remarkable. 14 of those games have been aligned under three and a half. They're one point separated in straight up wins. They're one one game separated in ATS wins. You are now three and oh on Pittsburgh bets going the first three weeks of the season. You and I had a bet last week where we bet crab meat. Crab legs at oh, Joe's Seafood Crab Price. meat. I thought it was crab meat. Oh, yeah. Dave, wasn't that crab oh, well, meat we yeah, bet? No, I, I can't no, really no, remember. It but it was uh, no, it was not imitation crab. And meat Dave was bet. supposed to go to make sure that you know that we did do the bet. So yeah. Dave has a vested interest in this as well. But you know what? No one follows the Steelers more than you do. No one has had a better feel for the Steelers. So start us off on this Baltimore Pittsburgh game and what you think about this game moving forward. Well, you know what? That was such a great introduction and the sad part of it is is I'm not going to tell you anything right now. Cuz this, this is another my, best bet. Another best bet. I'm right. using it as the best bet. Why not? I'm 3 and 0 oh, go and and I'm not a homer, guys. I went against them in week 1 against Cleveland. I used the over in week 2 and I went with them in week 3. So the Steelers only have one win. I was on them for the win, but I'm 3-0 and going with and against them, and I'll have my play in the best bet section. So thanks for that great introduction, but I'm not telling you anything right now. Well, that's because you didn't pay your crab leg deal, bill yet. Well, there wasn't a seven-day expiration date on that payoff. Look at me. So. Do you think I ever wait to eat? I've been craving crab legs. I just figured with the Browns <laughs> win, that would make us even. Yeah. But anyway, you know, moving forward to this game, to me right now, Pittsburgh's defensive issues are a problem. Since Ryan Cesar has gone out, they've had a losing record. This Baltimore defense is allowing 273 yards per game, 17 first downs. Pittsburgh, on the flip side, is has been atrocious on the stop side. And, yes, they had a good first half against Fitzpatrick and Tampa Bay. That was a must-win situation. I like the defensive dog in this game, plain and simple. It's the Steelers and the Ravens, right? Yep. Three-point game. <laughs> I mean, you know, some, sometimes it's just it, it, these teams play close games. This is a so you're re- getting three and a half, so you're well, back in the it, Baltimore. It's, it's a real rivalry, and uh, it's just it's probably going to be another close game. And to me, you're you're the coin flip lucky or coin flip unlucky. All right, good stuff, guys. Here in the NFL, that wraps up the NFL section. So we're heading into the final part of the show. It's best bet time, and you know, last week, Dave, we. Gave somebody, you know, good ribbing, and uh, he's the only one that had a winner last week. So, wasn't me. I had. I think I used the Wisconsin Iowa under. Yeah, that so did. that was a rather horrible beat. You want to talk about a goes. bad beat on Not Scott bad. Van Pelt's he, show? I mean, did. that was one of them. Yeah. that's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. So I'm. I'll go with. You know, I, we're, I gonna come, we're safe. We're coming back, but we're we're going to take oh, the quick oh, break oh, and go back. But oh, I was just right. I was just setting him up ah. because we busted his balls last week that he was the only one that lost the previous week. So he came back and was the only one that won. So we'll give him his due. We'll be back in a moment here on the Wager Talk podcast. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Wager Talk podcast. This is the final segment. It's best bet time. And congratulations to Ralph Michaels. You won last week. The Bears. The Bears. Yeah, you got it. It was the Baylor Bears. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I, I had them as well. Yep. Yeah, you sure did. And we will let not you a, not as the free play, not as the uh, best, best bet of the bet. show, but yeah. Baylor was a. They actually player. were on my card as well. I mean, yeah. well, that's so I, that's we talk about they giving out these card. free plays. There's many times these free yep. plays are strong enough that they're on our right. actual card, yeah. and, and that's just the quality we want to give out here on this podcast. So we'll let you lead it off. Tell us who your best bet is this. You week. know, before I get to that, 
17 and 8 in college football to start this season. A great first four weeks for me. And uh, yeah, again, I love college football. I love college basketball. But I've got a special that's going to allow you to get two weeks of service, both football and basketball, for the price of one week. Sign up now. You're not missing anything on Thursday. I won't have any Friday plays, but you'll get two weeks of football for $99. Just go to wagertalk.com, go to the Cal Sports page, and it's listed right there. No special code needed. It's a BOGO offer from Ralph. Buy one, get one. Wow, Marco, you are really (laughs) up to your advertising cliches. (laughs) You know what? I'm taking a team that... You know, very few people have interest in this Hawaii-San Jose State game, and why would you? But Hawaii has completely impressed everyone. I'll tell you what, their quarterback is off to a 19-1 start, his ratio. Incredible. But now they're traveling to the mainland for the third straight time. They're 1-13 as an away favorite. They've lost seven straight times as an away favorite. San Jose State is a much-improved team. They're 4-0 ATS. The line has dropped down a few points, but I still like the Spartans in the situation. Good stuff from Ralph. Let's go to Dave. Who are you looking at? Well, I'll, I'll throw in. I, I don't have a special, okay? Uh, but uh, it was about 65% for the year in college football in the plays. At Wager Talk last weekend. It was four and one in the colleges that I posted. Two and zero oh in the NFL, and a few baseball winners. And a this few week. baseball yeah. winners this yeah. week. So it's uh, there's a little bit of a heater going on right now. So you know, not a bad time to uh, check out the place. Uh, I, I won't be posting this one, but I, I probably will bet it. And I, I don't like to post first half plays on the site, and the, the primary reason is you can't play them early, and I don't have time to write up games. On Sunday morning, I just mm-hmm. don't have—I honestly don't have the time. Otherwise, I'd probably post this, but I am going to probably play it. And we we talked about it. I, I think Raiders' first half is a good bet against the Browns, so uh, it'd probably be two, uh, one and a half, two. And I think the Raiders are the right side there. And just to throw in to add to your play there, Baker Mayfield. It's one thing coming off the bench yep. in a game. Yep. You know, you don't have time to think about it or be nervous about it. You know, the adrenaline you're in. You know, a week to prepare, and it's also a week for Oakland to prepare, too. Let's see what he does in having to play on the road. We'll see. I mean, I didn't really factor this in because I don't know what's going to happen. But it is, for the first time in a long time, Brown's off a win. Yeah, I'm not saying they're going to let down, but, you know, we finally beat somebody, and they could let down. They're, They're... Oh, and one in that situation the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that. All right, guys. For my best bet, we're going to go to the Steeler game. Before I get to it, I want to give you guys a quick promo for me. Uh, no bones about it. First, you know, two weeks I got off to a slow start with college football. The NFL, I, I was good from the start, but my college football wasn't good. We had a nice week last week. We went 6-0. and oh, uh, over the weekend with our college and pro plays, twelve and three run right now with everything baseball in there as well. So if you want to get on board, this is the week to do it. And I've got a special thirty day offer. Normally three twenty five. If you use coupon code Marco seventy five, you can get seventy five dollars off a thirty day package. I talked about the Steeler game. I'm going to go to it. This is one of the best rivalries in the NFL and I know I'm a homer because I'm Pittsburgh Steeler but if you've ever watched these games Dave they're the hardest hitting games they were bloodbaths when you would watch these two teams play however and you know I'm tied in real good with everybody in Pittsburgh I talked to one of the guys at the stadium and they got a big package delivered from the NFL this week for these two teams for the Sunday night game 22 big fluffy pillows for all of the players so we're going to have a pillow fight so nobody gets hurt they don't want any quarterbacks getting hurt i think it's it's actually the the new rule on the books now is if you give the quarterback a dirty look that, that is that is 15 yards in an expulsion but all kidding aside i'm looking at the total in this game and Throw out what we've seen with the Steeler defense. They're playing a team they know inside and out, and Baltimore knows Pittsburgh inside and out. This total's too high for this series. It's the highest total that I've gone back and looked at that I could find with these two teams. Four, two, and one over the last seven games as far as the under goes with these two. 
One of those two overs was the game last year. Everybody remembers that game. It was one of the best games of the season, 39-38, late in the year, when Pittsburgh, with the reach over the goal line to win the game and propel them into the playoffs. And I can say, well, looking at that game and then what these teams have done so far this year, the Steelers, the over's the way to go. The game last year was the first game without Ryan Shazier. That was the week after he got hurt. Pittsburgh was in total disarray as far as the defense goes, and they've never really recovered, but especially for that game, they were missing assignments because he's the guy that would call the assignments and everything on the field. I like this game under. I've got it 47 or less points scored. That is my best bet for this week. Take Pittsburgh. Baltimore under. I want to thank all of our guests this week uh, for joining us. We had Will Bernacki from CG Analytics joining us, stopping by, telling us where the money has been this week. Also, thanks to Mark Lawrence. Mark Lawrence from Playbook.com. Stop by for Handicappers Corner. And, of course, my guys in the studio, Dave Koken and Ralph Michaels. And, of course, Mark Seidel behind the controls, making sure we sound good. Big shout-out to our guy in Detroit, Johnny Detroit. He's a guy to make sure this podcast gets up everywhere. You can find us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, Google Play. Check it out. Spotify. We're everywhere. And, of course, you, our loyal listeners. Without you guys, we wouldn't be doing this podcast. We appreciate you listening to us. Hey, if you like the podcast, like us, leave a comment, and be sure to tell your friends. We'll be back next week. I'm Marco D'Angelo. Until then, let's cash some tickets.